We've only got one problem, the mind, the only fly in the ointment. Otherwise, all systems are go. I don't speak for anyone else, but I am many of the brats in the Bible. The writer and youth minister, Mark Iaconelli, describes the Bible as a weird collection of songs, stories, poems, letters, prayers, rules, dreams, mystical experiences, dietary rules, and detailed instructions for building a giant boat. <laughs> the people who wrote the Bible are trying to express an overwhelming, freeing, terrifying, exhilarating experience that we have nicknamed God. But what always resonates for me are tales of the worried, sullen, and skeptical. That's me fairly often. I'm the older brother in the parable of the prodigal son. I am also the younger brother who returns to his father's home, dissipated and desperate, willing to work alongside the servants in the field for food and shelter, who is instead welcomed home by his father, rejoiced in, wept over, but not, of course, by his morally excellent, priggish older brother with his clipboard and Protestant work ethic. Having never deserted the family, he now has to watch his father throw a dance and banquet for his horrible loser baby brother. He, of course, meanwhile, has had everything he's ever longed for in exquisite life, but it's not enough. I was reminded of the old Far Side cartoon, no, it was a New Yorker cartoon, actually, of some dogs sitting around together and saying, it's not enough that we win, the cats must lose. <laughs> um, it's not enough. The father beseeches him. We have to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. But the older brother isn't having any of it. He won't go inside the banquet room to the feast and the music. He says, no, dad, the cats must lose. When we leave him, he's angry and still outside. This is me, the bitter goody two-shoes. Another funhouse mirror for me is the story of Jonah, which all Sunday school kids love because of the whale. Yet the real meat of the story is what happens after Jonah is burped onto dry land and despite his best efforts, ends up in Nineveh, where God had told him to go all along. Nineveh is any big city, hyper-competitive, full of corruption, cruelty, bankers, and tea party types. It would later be... It would later be the capital of Assyria, where Iraq is now, and the Ninevites were the Klingons, violent warriors who were Israel's enemy. Jonah, like all Israelites, felt about them the way Ronald Reagan felt about the Russians, that they were the evil empire. And Jonah is furious that God is making him go there to preach instead of someplace nice. Jonah spreads the word for exactly one day, as it has come through him, that God hates the Ninevites. They're doomed. If they don't become people of God, of peace and mercy, they'll be destroyed. So on the spot, they repent. It's like Klingons turning into Alan Alda. <laughs> and God spares them. But Jonah is furious and sulky because God has refused to destroy the awful, evil people that he hates. A destruction would be, that would be a big victory for Israel. He thinks God is making him look bad. I love this so much. The point of the story is the mercy of God. Even when the worst people on earth undergo a change of heart, God and God's infinite love and goodness changes his mind. Toward the end of the story, Jonah sits moping under the shade of a tree on the outskirts of town. He doesn't notice that there is peace in the land now and kindness. That's what mercy is, peace and kindness. And that shade is a form of mercy in the hot Assyrian sun. Then to further mess with him, God sends a worm that begins eating the leaves. And Jonah's mad now because God won't save the tree. He feels sorry for Mr. Tree, but not for the people of Nineveh, who statistically are mostly women, kids, and the elderly. Did Jonah ever get over himself? We don't know, because his story ends with a question from God. I eat Jonah, what the F? <laughs> Mercy for a tree, but not a people? Did the older son finally go into the feast for the prodigal brother? We don't know that. We are, jo we are Jonah. Two, the parables don't end with the answer. They end with a question. Will the elder brother do the deep dive toward family and mental healing, breathe in all the joy and mercy he has seen, 
and go into the feast? Will you? Will I?